Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be an anti-haul. I'm excited to film it. I do love chatting about new makeup, but as I was looking through all of the new makeup products, you know, I was going to film a purchase or pass video, I decided instead to do an anti-haul because there are quite a few products that I'm personally not planning on buying. There are some that definitely caught my eye that I thought about adding to my cart, but I decided to talk myself out of them. I just did a big declutter, and at this point, I'm not looking to buy a lot of new makeup. I did purchase a few products during Ulta's 20 21 days of beauty, so I was thinking about doing a haul if that's something you would want to see. I kept it pretty minimal. I purchased products that I would have paid full price for. I think I spent maybe $100 total. So if you wanted to see more of like a small, realistic haul, let me know and I can film that for you guys. But anyways, today I'm talking about new makeup that I'm not going to buy. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I did want to do a giveaway for you guys. I know it's such a stressful time right now, and makeup and new makeup isn't high on the priority list for a lot of people, but for for me, when I sit down to do my makeup, I just find it very therapeutic, very relaxing. So I thought I could give back and share some new products with you guys. I purchased some of these products. I did receive some in the mail as PR, but I've been saving them for a giveaway. So I thought today's video would be the perfect time to give back. I will be sending out two different packages. If you guys are interested in entering, it's always very simple. It's just to be able to give back to my subscribers. So just check the description box below. The only rules are that you have to be subscribed to my channel and leave a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching, let's jump into the anti-haul. Okay, let's start with a product that I almost purchased, but I did talk myself out of it for a few different reasons. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Bloom Blush. It's available now on the Sephora website and it retails for $19. And as soon as I saw this, I was pulled in because I do like the Natasha Denona blushes and cheek products that I've tried. They're just so glowy and gorgeous. And I feel like a lot of her blushes are almost like blush highlighter hybrids. So they give your skin the most gorgeous sheen. And I like that this one is a mini and it's a lot more affordable than her full size blushes. But like I said, there are a few reasons I decided not to purchase this. First of all, I just decluttered my blushes and I did declutter a few other sections of my makeup collection. And because of that, I feel like now is a good time to take a step back and not necessarily buy a lot of new products in those categories. I'm not saying I won't buy any blush in 2020 because I'm sure I will. And actually I did pick one up during Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty. But other than that, I feel like now is a good time to focus on using what I have. And that way I can rediscover some older favorites and maybe see if there are any areas in my blush collection where I'm missing some. Something, like a certain color, a certain formula. Second of all, I do have the Natasha Denona Bloom Blush and Glow Palette that was released last year, and that's kind of like what this one is based on, and this is a new shade. It's not an exact dupe for the shade in the palette. I think that this one is maybe a little bit more pink and a little less orange, but you know, at the same time, if I'm actually wearing these on the cheeks, I don't know that I would see a big enough difference to need both of them. So for those two reasons, I am going to be skipping over it, even though I think it is really beautiful. Along with that blush, Natasha Denona also released a new mini eyeshadow palette. So when I first saw this, I wasn't even a little bit interested because the color story it just, it wasn't super appealing to me for some reason. So I scrolled right past it like the first few times I saw it and then I did see swatches and those are what caught my eye. I don't know what it is, but the mini palettes just don't seem to work for me. Every time that I've purchased one in the past, I found the formula to be very inconsistent. And then when I tried the Sunrise palette and most recently the Love palette, I actually enjoyed like the majority of the shadows in each palette. And I don't know why that is, but when I purchased the $25 palettes, I just don't have great luck. So I've kind of written them off. And even if there's one that really jumps out at me, I've kind of like made up my mind not to purchase it. I really doubt that every single Natasha Denona mini palette isn't going to work well for me, but when it comes to this one, because the colors in the pan aren't super appealing to me, I don't know how often I would reach for it. I think I would get use out of the pink shades, but I just feel like I wouldn't wear the gray tones a whole lot, even though the swatches are so beautiful. So again, I'm kind of avoiding reviews on this because if it gets rave reviews, I might tell myself that it's okay to purchase it and I just don't feel like I personally need it. So Hourglass just re-released their Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. This was available for the holidays in 2017, and they just released a holiday palette from... Was it 2018 or 2019? So it seems like they've been bringing out some older favorites, but this is available now on the Hourglass website for $64. 
It's a pretty palette and hourglass palettes always catch my eye because hourglass products are very expensive. So when they include smaller cheek products in a palette for a discounted price, I'm definitely curious. I don't need full size cheek products these days. I just enjoy mini products. I feel like it gives me a better variety without having to pay as much. $64 is still pretty pricey, but I've tried one of their highlighters in another palette and it just didn't blow me away. Actually, I have it right here. I keep it in the drawer. I like the desk that I film at. This one is their Strobe Powder in Euphoric Strobe Light. It's this shade right here, and I do wear it, especially when I'm using this palette. I typically bring this palette with me when I go out of town, and it's nice to have a highlighter in there, but it's never become one of my absolute favorite products. I didn't enjoy it so much that I went out and bought another Hourglass highlighter. So I will be skipping over this one. It's really beautiful, and again, I've heard great things, but for me, I just don't feel like I necessarily need it. Let's talk about a few eyeshadow palettes. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy an eyeshadow palette during the month of April. If I do, it might be an older palette that I had considered in the past that I never ended up purchasing rather than a new release. But there are some that I wanted to mention. There are some gorgeous palettes and there's also one that I kind of hate. So let's start with the pretty ones first. So Sigma's actually been catching my eye lately with some of their new releases. I don't think I've ever tried any of their makeup products. I did try some of their brushes in the past, but it's been a while. They just released this really pretty palette called Cordy Rosa, and it's going to be available on April 14th on their website for $49. This palette's just pretty. It is a warm toned palette. I kind of feel like it's an amped up version of the Anastasia Modern Renaissance. Like everything is a little bit more saturated. And again, the swatches are really gorgeous. The reason why I'm not going to buy this one is because Again, I just did an eyeshadow palette declutter and I'm okay with purchasing a few palettes this year, but I kind of have my go-to warm toned neutral palettes at this point. And when I buy a new palette, it's not usually in that category. It's usually more colorful or it's like a small curated palette. So I don't feel like I necessarily need to add this one to my collection. It's taking some self-control because I think that this is gorgeous, but I do feel like I can maybe dupe this one with existing shadows in my current collection. The other palette that I do think is really gorgeous is from Artist Couture. So I haven't tried too many things from this brand. I have tried their loose highlighter. I have one in my collection that I really enjoy. And then I feel like I got something else from this brand in a boxy charm. But anyways, I saw this palette on Instagram and it did catch my eye because I think it's gorgeous. Gorgeous, and I do think it's going to appeal to a lot of people who just like to wear like these gorgeous staple neutrals. So this one comes with 12 different shadows. It looks like you get eight mattes and four metallics and it looks gorgeous, it really does. But I just have quite a few neutral shadows at this point that I don't feel like I need to buy this one. I also feel like my ColourPop Going Coconuts palette is like my staple neutral palette. So at this point, I'm not really in the market for a new one. If I was, I might consider this one, but I'm not, so I am going to skip over it. Okay, so let's talk about the palette that I kind of hate. Stila released a new eyeshadow palette called the Road Less Traveled Palette. It has eight shadows in it and it retails for $39. It's funny because I'm on the Trend Mood Instagram page and one of the comments on this photo says, I couldn't dislike this color story more if I tried. And that's totally how I feel. I don't know what it is about this, but it's just not appealing to me at all. There's something about the way that these colors are laid out or the shades they chose. It's just not doing it for me. I don't even feel like I could get a lot of use out of these shadows individually. If I was to use it as an accent palette, it kind of looks like they mixed a holiday themed palette with a spring palette and they couldn't decide which direction to go in. So I don't know, it's just confusing to me. I want to like Stila, I really do. There are some products from the brand that I enjoy like their liquid lipsticks, I still wear those. Also their glitter and glow eyeshadows, that's not something I wear a lot, but when I do wear a liquid shadow, I reach for theirs. But these days their new products just don't appeal to me. I don't know what it is, so I want them to Maybe do like a rebrand and come out with something new and exciting. I don't know what I want from them, but this palette is just not it. So Milk Makeup released some new products that honestly kind of made me give them like a little bit of a side eye. And I think it's because their previous release, what was it? It was their Vegan Milk Moisturizer. And I think that was so good. That was like such a hit. A lot of people loved it. And I was really impressed by it. So because of that, I think I was just kind of surprised to see this. So the first one is the Melatonin Overnight Serum. This retails for $36 and it does come in like their regular stick packaging. First of all, I'm not the biggest fan of their stick packaging. I've tried a couple of their serums and they've been great, but it's just not my favorite way to apply skincare. So I think because of that, I'm 
that already kind of has me a little bit disinterested. But this is an overnight solid serum that rejuvenates, hydrates, and calms your skin. The part that kind of gets me is that they're saying it has topical melatonin and Persian silk tree extract. And these ingredients are supposed to support your skin's visible melatonin levels and provide antioxidant benefits. When I first saw that, I was kind of skeptical because you wouldn't expect to see melatonin in skincare products. At least, you know, when I typically think of melatonin, I don't think of applying it topically, and I couldn't see how that would have a big benefit for the skin, but I didn't want to be ignorant, so I did Google it. I'll put some articles in the description box below if you guys want to read about it. So it's kind of interesting that brands are including melatonin as a skincare ingredient. It kind of sounds like it's supposed to help with anti-aging. So I, I guess it kind of makes sense. For me, I feel like they're capitalizing on the fact that they are including melatonin, not just milk makeup, but a couple of the other products that I read about. And they're marketing the products as like an overnight serum. So when you hear the buzzword melatonin, you probably think they're going to help you sleep better. I don't know. I mean, obviously as consumers, it's our job to to do research and decide what will work well for us and what won't. I feel like melatonin is going to become the new CBD oil. Like so many brands were capitalizing on that and they had entire skincare lines surrounding that. And I just felt like it got to be a little bit gimmicky. So I could see that happening with melatonin as well. They also released a melatonin overnight lip mask for $22, which I will not be buying either. Okay, so let's talk about some Too Faced products. Too Faced is releasing quite a few new products. I don't think I'll touch on all of them, but there are some new additions to their Tutti Fruity line. The first one is the Papaya. Papaya eyeshadow palette for $34. Some of you guys were asking me if I was planning on purchasing this because some of you guys know that I do like the Tutti Fruity line. I know a lot of people don't like that line. The products can sometimes be found at like TJ Maxx and Marshalls for a discounted price, but I really like the blushes and I do like the two eyeshadow palettes that I do have from the line. So I assume eventually we might be able to see this one at TJ Maxx and Marshalls as well, only because I don't think that that line sells that well. So I'm kind of surprised they are expanding it. But to be honest with you guys, I do enjoy a few products from it. I won't be buying this particular palette because I don't know. I just feel like I have a lot of palettes with these shades in it. I love the pink tones, but I don't know. I just feel like I don't need this one, especially for $34. I mean, knowing that some of their products are on sale at TJ Maxx and Marshalls does make me a little bit more hesitant to pay full price for them, especially if it's a line that I think might go on sale eventually. So for me, I just don't think I will buy that one. Even if it does go on sale and I can find it for a discounted price, I just don't feel like I necessarily need it, but I do like those palettes. They also did a new strobing bronzer for $30. This one looks a little bit deeper than the one that they already have in their line. I did try the original one. If you like super glowy bronzers, I think you'll like this. It's like a true highlighter bronzer hybrid. It's very, very glowy on the cheeks, but I won't be buying this one because I did own the other one and I ended up decluttering it. It was good, but it wasn't something that I reached for all the time. I prefer more of a matte bronzer. They are releasing some lip products. They're also doing a primed and poreless invisible texture smooth face powder for $34. I kind of feel like they already released this powder, so I don't know if it's just repackaged or if it's actually a new product. It is a mattifying translucent pressed powder that helps visibly blur pores and refine skin texture while, absor while absorbing oil. That sounds nice. It actually sounds like a perfect powder for me. I'm actually in the middle of a powder no buy. I don't know that it's going to end anytime soon. I'm just trying to focus on what I have. It might not end until the end of the year, honestly, because I do have quite a few powders in my collection. So that is not something that I'm going to buy at this point, but it does sound like it would work really well for me. The primer that they released also sounds similar. It's called the Primed and Poreless Pore Banishing and Blurring Face Primer, and it also retails for $34. This is a blurring and mattifying face primer that helps minimize the appearance of pores and imperfections to create a smooth, flawless canvas. <laughs> Again, I'm in the middle of a primer no-buy as well. If you guys watch my Project Pan videos, you probably know that. But if not, I have so many primers in my collection, so many that I love and I enjoy, but I just don't feel like that is a category that I need to accumulate more products in. I'm just trying to focus on what I do have. I go through powder very, very quickly. So I could see myself ending my powder no buy sooner than my primer no buy, but I definitely don't think I will end my primer no buy until at least the end of the year. I also feel like the Catrice Keep Me Matte Primer, which is what I'm wearing today, 
kind of does something similar and that's like six dollars so i feel pretty content with what i do have in that category okay i think the last thing that i will touch on today will be these new kissed by bronzers from the brand vesca beauty vesca beauty kind of looks like a newer brand i think this is the only product they currently have but they are cruelty free and vegan and they released these really pretty bronzers the description of this bronzer again it makes it sound like my kind of bronzer. It is an ultra blendable formula that leaves your skin with a soft matte skin like finish and they do come in seven shades. It does say that these are scented. I don't know if it's the minimal packaging or the fact that I've seen a couple of people describing these as like extra smooth blendable bronzers, but for some reason they are appealing to me. I am going to say no to these because as you guys might know, I have a hard time with bronzers. I rarely find a new bronzer formula that I like, and I'm not on an official no-buy when it comes to bronzers, but kind of like an unofficial no-buy. I'm just so content with what I have. I love the Balms bronzer, my bronzer from e.l.f. Recently, I tried the Essence bronzer palette, and that's actually been the only thing that I've been wearing for like the past month or two, so I feel like I'm good for now. Bronzer isn't the type of product that I feel like I want to switch up every single day, like eyeshadow or blush or lip Lipstick. I feel like there are certain products in my collection or certain categories where I am content with finding like a good staple formula like a bronzer or a foundation or a brow pencil. Those are just like my staples and I am so happy when I find something that works well for me. So I don't feel like I need to buy a lot of bronzers. In fact, I feel like I should stop searching for more formulas that I like because I am content with what I have. Okay guys, that is the end of my anti-haul video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, watching one of my videos. I really do appreciate it. Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything else you guys want to see on my channel during the month of April. But otherwise, I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.